Hi guys, what we're going to do in this video is talk about photo bracketing and uh, how we can use it and I suppose when we should use it. Um, years ago I used to use it all the time but that was mainly because the camera was just rubbish and by doing uh, bracketing I was able to get a lot of contrast and colour into the shot so that's one of the bonuses of doing uh, auto bracket exposure but uh, I suppose you might know it as HDR, high, dyna high dynamic range. It's just a case of taking three, three pictures normally, one underexposed, one normal and one overexposed. That's the general principle of it. So I think this would be quite a quick video, it's quite an easy thing for you to do. And um, sometimes it's good just to play around with it. So let's talk about the settings on the camera before we get into it. The um, most modern cameras have um, auto bracketing where you can just press it once and then it will automatically fire how many shots you set it for. I, I advise just to try to stick to three shots. Um, so in your camera menu you'll, you'll probably find it, auto, it's just bracketing, set it for free and um, then it'll just get on with it. If your camera doesn't have auto bracketing, um, what you can do is you can do it manually. And the best way of doing it manually is to, is to use, um, well some people say use um, your shutter speed to adjust the exposure down one stop or so and up again. Um, but you, the best way I find to do it if you're doing it manually is to use the compensation, your exposure compensation dial, take it down up, um, one or two stops and obviously up one or two stops. I find that's the easiest. So. I'm in front of a shot here, probably could get away with not bracketing, but for this purpose we're going to do it. So I'm just going to wake my camera up again. I am focused, and at the moment it's not on auto bracketing, and the reason for that is, if I'm using the same SD card, and I'm doing normal shooting, and then I'll do a bracketed exposure, what I advise you to do is, whilst it's still in single shooting mode, is to cover the lens up with your hand, and just take a picture, and now you've got your hand in front of your shot. So when you get it up back in Lightroom, you can see your hand and then you know that every shot after that hand is three shots of your bracketed exposures. So let me um, just turn on bracketing. I've got it set up as a quick, um, quick button there. And I'm gonna just put, move it over to about one stop although the sky is quite bright so I could probably go more and don't forget to OK that and then get out your menu hopefully I'm showing you this what I've done on the video and then I'm now going to take a shot on a timer and that was really quick now I can see one of the shots the sky is flashing because it's overexposed but the dark picture hopefully would give me that sky that, that I want so, and I always take one for luck. Brilliant. And it really is that simple. It really is. Um, the only thing you, you need to think about, really, I think, is do you need to take a bracketed shot? Now, the rule of thumb is um, if the light is different, say down in the shade, it's minus one stop, you think. And, but yet the sky is plus one stop and then you think yeah well auto bracketing would work in this occasion and uh, then it's worth doing so let me uh, give you some tips that you could use um, or not use it's, it's, it depends on how you shoot now some people when they do bracketing they they reckon that you should well some people say set your focus up and then on the lens um, switch it to manual focus and then take your shot that way the focus stays the same for eight shots I, I, I think most modern cameras can handle an autofocus setting um, but some people say switch to manual focus when bracketing, after you've set your focus up, then switch it to manual. 
Some people say once you've got everything set up, switch to manual mode, like so. And according to that, I'm underexposed. So that's because of the sky. So this is manual mode. And to me, it looks exactly the same. But I like to shoot in aperture priority. So that's probably where I'll, I'll keep it. So just to recap, some people say switch to manual focus once you, once you get your focus set. Some people say switch to manual mode and shoot it in manual. Um, but I, I tend to keep it in aperture priority and the autofocus, I'll just leave alone. And it seems to work fine for me. I suppose it depends on what camera you've got. Um, but most cameras nowadays have auto bracketing. And that's the way I recommend. But try and stick, stick to three pictures because um, it just gets too too many files and it fills up your card too quick because you are dealing with raw big files. Um, I don't think you need more than three myself. There might be occasions where you might want more. But on the most part three shots. There really isn't much to say about bracket. It really is that simple to do and, and I think the way to do it if, if you're not sure about it is just to go out and do it and um, give it a go it really is like that uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'll, I'll, I'll meet you back in the um, in front of the computer and we'll process those images I'll show you how I do it because that's that's the most important part I think the actual shooting part is really easy um, if you've just only shot in auto bracketing mode, most of your shots will come out fine as far as focus goes. That's how I did it years ago, years ago excuse me, with bracketing, mainly because the camera wasn't very good. Um, but yeah, it has its place. Just if the sky's too bright or the shadows are too dark, then you think, okay, I might do some auto bracketing. That's all it really is. Anyway, I'll see you back in front of the computer. I'll see you in a minute. We're in the uh, well, in my virtual office, green screen. Um, okay, we're looking at um, Lightroom here, and we're just going to do this off the half, on the hoof, shall I say? I haven't actually even looked at these pictures yet. This is live, so as you can see, there's my hand. So I know that every picture beyond this hand is um, bracketed pictures. So let me go straight into develop mode. There we go, there's my beautiful hand. So that now we know that every picture here is um, a bracketed exposure in freeze. So I can take the first one here and just to keep for quickness, let's just click auto. So we've got to do a fair bit, a fair amount of work here. That's probably overdone it actually, because I want some of those darks in that dark. So I'm, I'm just going to undo that. Um, I don't want to mess around too much in the darks so okay what I'm looking at here is the sky more than anything okay let's have a look at this one this one is um, that's the overexposed this is the normal exposure so I can maybe do an auto on that try and get that looking fairly good I don't have to worry too much about this exposure contrast take that down just a touch okay and this one this is the overexposure so we're going to get the highlights i'm just going to leave that so i've very literally little literally very little done there let's select them all so i've selected all three and we're going to right click and we're going to come up and find the um photo merge hdr there we go now lightroom's all right for doing hdrs i wouldn't say it was brilliant um, but as you can see, what I should have pointed out to you is these settings here. It's got auto align on and auto settings. And um, you can set it how much contrast, you know, how much brightness and contrast you want with these settings here. Um, create a stack. Now, that doesn't look too great, does it? <clears throat> Let's have a look. Let's have a look around here. Okay. Well, let's try medium. See if that makes a difference. Nah, 
it's, it's the same, doesn't it? Okay, let's merge those. Now, like I said, Lightroom, I wouldn't say it was brilliant for this. I'd rather do this in um, Neo. Okay, so there you go. That's created it. So if I just go to this, no, so this this is a normal exposed image, same location. You see, it looks fairly flat. The sky is quite blown out. This is the HDR version here. You can see now we've got some of that sky in there. Every, well, we've got everything, haven't we? So now we can tweak this up. Um, just play around with these settings a little bit. There you could look, drop that down, get some of that sky coming in. What happened there? There we go, drop that down a touch. We could play around with this contrast a little bit. Do we need to mess about with the highlights? Not too much there. Um, the whites, let's hold this button down so we can see, make sure we're not blowing anything out. There we go. And the shadows, the blacks, look at that, we could bring that down a bit, maybe about there, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Texture. Ooh, I like bringing the texture down, if anything. I like it, I like that soft look. There we go. Play with the clarity. Oh, this one looks quite dark and light, doesn't it? Maybe this one might come out a little bit better. Should we try it quickly? Uh, where are you? HDR. Yeah, actually, that's not too bad, is it? Look at that, you've got the sun sort of showing through there. Let's just press merge on that. Sort of an unusual look, isn't it? Look at that. Now we could take that into Luminar and put some beams coming out of there, couldn't we? Let's just have a little play around. Not too much though. Where are we? In the texture. Let's drop that texture down a little bit. I, I really do like the old softy look. There we go. Now, that's it. It's really job done, isn't it? As you can see there, you're getting the sky and the landing. All those details on the HDR. Really is quick and easy. It's so simple nowadays to do this. With the alignment and everything. You don't need to go and even go into Photoshop anymore. Just do it all in Lightroom. And I'm really tempted to go into Neo, Luminar Neo. Um, Luminar Neo. <laughs> I just can't help myself. It's crying out to me. Come on, Luminar. Don't let me down. Lumina, Lumina, Neo. Right, so we go to edit in here. Come on. It's lagging as I've got so many things running. There we go, it's normally a bit quicker than this. So the first thing you do in Lumina is edit, uh, enhance. Always have a play around with the owl, with the enhance. Now, don't go too mad with it. You can even play around with that sky enhance as we, as we do have a sky to play around with. Um, and what I'm looking for is my sun rays. There we go. Sun rays. Let's bung that up there like that. It's place that sun rays in the sun. <laughs> there we go. Look at that, you see? <clears throat> Have a little touch of sun rays. And we can even um, warm it up a bit. There we go. Just to blend that in. Look at that. Come on. About there warm those rays up even a little bit there you go off on off on that'll do me and that's it really do we need magic light no not magic light um where are we mystical yeah no we don't need a bit of mystical in there do we Maybe just a touch. Apply that. So you can have some fun with HDR because you've got so much d information to play around with. Um, so you, you can certainly have a lot of fun um, with 
these HDR images from free photos um, can transform a boring looking picture into something a little bit more interesting. <laughs> I quite like this one. It's made a good desktop picture, I think. Um, but you get the general idea. So if you look back on what we just did, the photo shoot was a piece of P. It was easy. So the photo shoot was easy, as you saw when we was out there. It was just like hardly even worrying about the exposure and stuff like that because I, you knew you were taking those free shots to capture everything. Yeah, you've got to make a little bit of an effort, but overall, uh, photo stacking was really simple. It didn't take us long at all. It was like bang, bang, it was done. No worries, you know, it's just like easy. And then if you've got Lightroom, um, as, you, as you've just seen, it's just a case of selecting the three images, clicking HDR does it all for you and then just do a little bit of playing around that's the fun part isn't it playing around with the dials um, get the effect you want and if you if you happen to own Luminar Neo you're gonna have even more fun as you just saw um, you could take it into Luminar Neo and really go to town on the HDR because you just got you just got so much information there on that picture that play play around with it's really good fun um, you can also do HDR if you only in Lumin Luminar Neo you don't have to do it in Lightroom you could do it in Lightroom edit there or you can go there just do it all in house I think Luminar is actually better for HDR um, <coughs> HDR images myself but sadly you can't use these raw files in Luminar Neo you've got to have you got to convert them to TIFF really um, so that is a downside to it so you still need to convert the files but it is good fun I will just take it from Lightroom to Luminar for the final touches and anyway, I hope you found that interesting and maybe learned something um, if you did please click the like button and remember to subscribe I'm really trying to get my subscriber count up that will help the channel and it, it motivate me to make more of these these uh, crazy tutorial videos anyway <clears throat> I'd love to see your pictures um, comment in in the description below and stuff like that let's know how you got on and uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Take care.